So on this piece of graph paper, I'm just going to draw a signal that looks a bit like that. Now this one over here, um, it could have any value. Let's say um, over here we're going to go from 0, uh, 1, 2, all the way up to 7. Okay, so we've got, uh, we go up to maybe 7 volts, perhaps this is um, maybe a sound wave which has then been recorded using a microphone and then we've actually got it stored in an electronic format. So we're going to have the voltage changing from maybe 0 to 7 and that means there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 possible levels here. Now this might be the perfect signal but when it's actually recorded or maybe transmitted or sent it's not going to go completely perfectly. And what I'm doing here is the signal with some of the noise within it. Now the noise could be caused by uh, maybe electrical interference, maybe between the wires, um, and it's something that's very, very hard to get rid of. Okay, so this is our starting signal. Now this might be transmitted, it might go perhaps um, in any one of a number of different formats of, of transmission, and effectively when we receive it, it might not be exactly as it was sent. And this could be due to the way that radio waves are being attenuated or absorbed by the atmosphere. Um, and what we might get is maybe something that looks potentially a little bit like this. So it might be even more noisy. So there might be more uh, kind of noise within that signal. And also you'll notice that it's not as high as it originally was because some of that uh, uh, maybe the radio wave has been absorbed as it's been transmitted. Now what you can then do is try and boost the signal and you maybe amplify it. Now the thing is if you just amplify the signal it makes it maybe similar to the original height but you're also going to be amplifying all of that noise within the signal. And this is something that we often hear maybe when you hear the, the hiss on a radio um, or so on. So this signal here, if we have an analogue signal and we send it um, with analogue methods, we often get quite a bad uh, signal at the other end. And analogue just means it can have any value. So this signal here could be any value between sort of 0 and 7. It could be 5.5, it could be 3.2, it could be any one of these values. So to get over the problems of using analogue communications, we send things digitally. And the way we do that is we sample this signal. So we're going to sample at regular time intervals, so we've got time along the bottom here, and um, I'm just going to put these decimal numbers down in binary format. So the number zero is zero, zero, zero. We've then got zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, and all I'm doing is I'm going to convert these different values for a voltage into a three-bit binary number. So here we have these eight different values represented in binary. And what we can then do is we can start to sample a signal at regular time intervals. So when we have this first interval, the number on here is closest to 4. So that would be the number 100. Zero, zero. At the next interval, it's going to be, I'd say, closest to 3, which is going to be 0, 1, 1. And then it's going to be closest to 1 for the next one. So that's going to be 0, 0, 1. Uh, this one here is closest to 2. 0, 1, 0. And as we go along with the signal, what we can see is that we're changing this analog signal into a series of 1s and zeros, And this is something which we can then quite easily transmit in a digital format. And we can do this by basically having one of two values. Um, perhaps we've got a signal which is maybe 1 volt, and then when this is zero, there's no signal being sent at this time. And then when it's one volt, we send something like this. So maybe this um, stream of numbers can be sent with a signal like this. And this may be sent down an optical fibre by using flashes of infrared light. Um, but effectively, there's still going to be some noise and there's still going to be loss of signal due to the fact that the signal gets weaker. So we might have uh, the signal get smaller as it goes over a certain distance. So maybe we see something like this. And also that signal is going to be quite noisy. So again, we might get something we receive that looks a bit like this. And we can use some clever electronics to boost the signal and also realise that this could only have one of two values. And that means what we can then do is we can 
even if the signal quality is quite poor, we can still see what the original signal was. So I can see here, it's more than zero. This one here tends to be about zero. And even if I don't see the perfect waveform, I can still reconstitute that signal. And this is the real advantage of digital signals. You see, this is a signal that we've received from the input signal here. And now we can then convert it back into a number. So we're going to have a 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. And as we knew that the data was sent with three bits, we can then use this to work out the values to plot onto another graph. So what we can now do is we can convert this digital signal back into an analog signal. So we've got 100, um, which is this point here. We've got 0, 1, 1. We've got 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and we've had 1, 1, 0 again. Now, um, when this is actually uh, electronics, they basically can make this signal back into an analog signal that's going to look like this, which is going to be very similar to the original signal that was sent. So what we can do is we can go from analog to digital, and then we go from digital back to analog. And one of the advantages here is that we don't actually have the noise from that original signal. Now, there are ways that we can actually improve this. What we can do is we can have a different number of levels up the side, so we can have um, a greater resolution. And also, we can take the samples more often. So again, perhaps this was our original signal. When we have noise, what we might see is something that looks a bit like this. And if we were to separate the noise from the original signal, what we might see is that the noise is some kind of variation like this. This is a bit like the kind of um, maybe static that you might see on TV, even if it's not actually uh, displaying a program, or at least in the old style uh, analog TVs that we used to have. So effectively, this distance down here um, is the signal we get from the noise. And we can see how big that is compared to the a big size of the total signal, which I'm, I'm going to call V total. And when it comes to looking at how many levels of information we want to split this up into, what we can actually say is that the number of bits is equal to log to the base 2 of V total over V noise. Now there's going to be this link between the total number of alternatives and the number of bits, and the minimum number of bits needed to transmit this data without including the noise in that signal is equal to B log 2 V total over V noise. Effectively, if you're sampling at too many um, levels, that means you're transmitting the noise in your digital signal as well. Basically, you don't want to have the resolution so great that all of the noise that you don't want is also transmitted. Now, the other thing we can look at is sampling. Okay, and this is quite important because um, if we think about what humans have, we can hear anything between sort of 20 hertz up to about 20,000 hertz. So that's 20 kilohertz. And there's a thing called Nyquist's theorem, which basically says that the sampling rate must be greater than twice the maximum frequency in that signal. So for audio, if we want to hear people talking, we want to hear music, we're going to have to have a signal which is greater than 40 kilohertz. And this means that we can then detect frequencies of 20 kilohertz in that signal. In actual fact, a value of 44.1 kilohertz is often used, and that's because of the, some of the technology that we had initially when we had these radio receivers. Now, there's actually quite a good reason for that. If, for example, we had this signal here, we can see that that's a maybe a, quite a high frequency signal. But if we sampled it at not quite a high enough rate, we might find the values maybe down here. Uh, we'd have a value here. At this point, the values here, 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 and so on. And actually, if we look at the sample, we send that sample, what we'd actually see then is a wave that looks actually a bit like this. And so we can see that even though we had quite a high frequency signal or originally, we're actually transmitting a lower frequency. This one here is called an alias, and this is something you want to avoid. 
and you can avoid it by sampling at a greater rate. Okay, so that's why we want to have a high rate of sampling so we don't get any of these aliases and basically low frequencies in the final signal. The final thing is to do with the amount of information transferred and it depends upon the sampling rate and also the amount of bits of data. And this basically says that the rate of transmission is equal to the number of samples per second times the bits per sample. So maybe it might be we're um, sampling 44.1 thousand times a second. We've got eight bits per sample to give us 256 different levels. And then we then have, you can see, a huge amount of information being sent digitally. But that's what our systems can cope with. They can easily send thousands and thousands of these every second, just this stream of zeros and ones, maybe whether something is on or off. And at the other end, we can put it together. And you might notice now, that when you're listening to music and you're streaming it on your phone and it's all sent digitally, the quality is absolutely amazing and it doesn't get worse over time. It's not like these old style tapes which would tend to um, over time degrade and, the, and what you heard wasn't as good as it used to be. With a digital signal, what we're recording is also what we're sending and therefore receiving. So just a little bit there about digital and analog signals.